Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing a celiac startup guide, guide to gluten-free, ins and outs of what to expect after your diagnosis, and some tips to not make the same mistakes I did. There is a common misconception that once you get diagnosed with celiac, you just go on this gluten-free diet, you make sure there's no gluten in any of your food, and then you're good to go. But that's not the case. And I thought that for like the first five months of my diet of, oh, I just have to make sure that no food items contain gluten and I'm perfectly fine. I wasn't prepared for how much more there was. I don't really know how you're supposed to prepare for a lifelong disease. You kind of just go with it and it comes with a lot of patience. So after my first six months of having that pure bliss of thinking, oh, I just eat gluten-free and that's it. Like I just have to make sure there's no gluten in any of my ingredients. I have to make sure of that gluten-free label. Perfect. I've got it. No. I had mental breakdown after mental breakdown after realizing how much more it is. Especially as my sensitivity grew to gluten, I became more sensitive to just the smallest amounts. Even when it's in the air, it's affecting me. So you can understand my frustration when I was getting further into this gluten-free diet, yet experiencing more pain than I was before. And for those of you who don't know what celiac disease is, it's an autoimmune disease that affects your entire body and it attacks your small intestines. And the only cure for it is a gluten-free diet and living a gluten-free lifestyle. For those who don't know what gluten is, gluten is is a protein that is naturally found in wheat, barley, and rye, and spelt. But I don't know what spelt is. There's over 300 symptoms of celiac disease, and severity ranges for people who have celiac disease. There's people who will never know their entire life that they have the disease because they show zero symptoms. And then there's some people who will just get their occasional stomach ache if they run into gluten. And then there's people who experience a lot of symptoms. Also, with severity, is different amounts can affect different people because there's some people who have celiac disease and they can have cross contamination and they don't feel any side effects. And then there's people like me who have literally passed out when they had gluten. There's something that you should note with celiac disease is no matter the severity of how you show your symptoms, you're still doing the same amount of damage to your body, even if you can't feel it. That's why it's very important for people who have celiac disease to follow the gluten-free diet so they're not damaging their intestines and their body. Personally, when I get gluten, I have the common symptoms of your regular stomach problems, so I'm in the bathroom for a while. But after my stomach problems, then I notice I have migraines, joint pain, brain fog, also deal with a lot of neurological problems. So like I said, brain fog is a huge one, but I also get very short tempered. I get irritable. I get very anxious about everything that goes on in my life. I get really bad mouth and throat ulcers, which basically feels like you have strep throat. And after I get glutened, my symptoms can last up to a month. And I'm not saying that it happens like I wake up every morning in agonizing pain and go to sleep in agonizing pain. I go in waves throughout the entire month where I'm like, oh, there's some days where I'm like, yeah, I can get up, I can go to the gym, I can do this. But then by 2 p.m. I'm like, I need to take a nap or I will not be able to function the rest of the day. And it's very weird because I was diagnosed at 22 years old. So I went 22 years without knowing I had celiac disease. And I was pretty asymptomatic growing up. I mean, I had your common stomach issues. There was like a few things, like I always had a big belly growing up. Always such like a tiny girl, but I would have like triplets in my stomach every time I ate. That wasn't normal. I'll just sidetrack to give you a quick story on how I got diagnosed. Like I've already said, I was fine for 22 years. I didn't really notice many problems. It wasn't until six months leading up to my diagnosis, I started noticing just very weird things. I mean, I was getting rashes all over my face. I gained 60 pounds in less than a year and I was very small, but I just looked very inflamed. Like I just looked bloated, just looked so red and puffy all the time. But my tell all and what got me to get diagnosed is I was waking up every single morning throwing up. It was like clockwork. I would wake up, start to feel achy as soon as I was getting up and I had to throw up and I was like, am I pregnant? And then anything I ate made me horribly sick. I remember eating an apple and I was throwing up. I couldn't even move the rest of the day because I was in so much pain after eating that apple. And I was like, I need to text my sister and she also has celiac so that helped a lot too and I texted her and I asked her what should I do and she's like get tested for celiac and I was like okay after she suggested that I went to the doctors and I got my blood work done which is the first part of the celiac test so there's two parts to the celiac test it is the blood work and your endoscopy which basically they just put a tube down your throat look inside see if they can see any celiac sprues and give you your results the most important thing when it comes to celiac testing, and I cannot stress this enough, do not go gluten-free until your testing is done. I wish my doctor would have told me that because after my blood work, I immediately went gluten-free because I thought that was it. And I was like, okay, sweet. Like I got my test, I'm good to go. No. So when I met with my GI and I told him, hey, I'm eating gluten-free, he was like, you need to start eating gluten now. Like you, two weeks before your endoscopy, you have to have a sandwich a day. And in my head, I was like, Oh, I'm eating good. Mind you, before I didn't have like a severe gluten attack yet. 
So I was more so just like pumped that I could eat whatever I wanted for two weeks straight. I made it five days. So if you have to do the gluten trial, don't eat out. Don't eat processed food. Be good to your body. Just buy like a baguette and eat that. I made the mistake of eating processed foods and I think that's why I couldn't last that long either is because not only was I eating gluten, which is the worst possible thing you could feed yourself when you have celiac disease. I was also eating like fast food, processed foods because I knew I was never going to be able to eat it again. So, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. I, not going to lie, now that it's been so long, don't regret it, but I don't recommend it. After I got my results, I honed down on my diet. I was like, I'm not going through whatever I just went through like two weeks ago with the gluten attack. And I found out there's a ton more than just making sure the ingredients are gluten free. The first thing I suggest you doing after your diagnosis is just cleaning out your kitchen. Anything that's gluten containing, give it away or throw it away if it's not good enough to give away. Anything that's wheat, barley, or rye, just say bye. And it also notes sometimes oats too. Some oats in the growing process grow close to wheat. So there is cross contamination with that. So when you are shopping for oats and oatmeal and things, make sure you're looking for gluten free labels on those because if it doesn't say that, wouldn't trust it. Other than getting rid of all of the gluten containing food, I also got rid of a lot of my kitchen stuff. Honestly, I started new with all of my kitchen stuff. There are some musts when it comes to replacing your kitchen stuff. Toaster, cutting board, wooden spoons, air fryer. I say air fryer because it blows air around and I have roommates and so I don't want to have to literally scrub in and out those little corners that are in an air fryer. You know what I mean? It's so much work. Just have a dedicated air fryer. It, trust me, trust me. Some people don't do this and some people do do this, but I also got rid of all my pots and pans, all my utensils, like cooking utensils, my spatulas, anything that I cooked with before that I knew I cooked with gluten, I just got rid of. Pots and pans were one of my last things that I replaced because I was still feeling sick even after switching out my cutting board, my toaster and all of that and I couldn't figure out why. Then I switched my pots and pans and I was like, I'm starting to feel better. And gluten hides in more than just your kitchen. So anything that's going in or near your mouth, make it gluten free. So that means your medicines, toothpaste, mouthwash, gloss, wash my shampoo, my conditioner, lotion, any topical products are gluten free too. While the gluten protein itself is not big enough to be absorbed through your skin and get to your stomach, a lot of people do have skin sensitivities to gluten, including myself. So I have to make sure all of my products are gluten free on my skin. I've had way, way too many rashes to ever, ever risk having gluten in a product again. And there are a lot of hidden names for gluten, especially when it comes to topical products and products that aren't going in your mouth because of all of those like weird chemical names. There are some hidden names for gluten. I'll put them right here. I suggest just putting this in your notepad, putting it somewhere where you can just refer to when you are out shopping. This one is very important. I put this at the same level as throwing away gluten food. It's talking to a dietitian, talking to a professional dietitian who knows celiac disease. That is key. Don't just go to any dietitian. Find someone who specializes in celiac disease because it's still such a rare disease that not many people can understand how serious celiac disease is and how severe it is to our bodies. So finding a dietitian that actually specializes in celiac, that's the way to go. Your GI will recommend you to a dietitian. Just know you do not have to use that dietitian. You can find so many great ones on Instagram or online just by Googling and they do virtual meetings too. So it's not like you have to find one in your area if you don't want to find what's best for you. After I met with my dietitian, that helps me put in perspective more so what I needed to do. They just have so much great information that helps guide you in the right direction on where you need to go because it's a confusing diet. So it's good to have someone as a helping hand. So after I got my diagnosis, I finally got to meet with my dietitian and I started doing a lot of research on my own and that is also when I started to try to find more recipes I wanted to try to turn my disease into something fun and like learn how to cook and learn how to cook gluten-free so I suggest like you can get a gluten-free cookbook or you can even just go on Pinterest and look up like gluten-free recipes or whatever you want to avoid look up that type of recipe and then just start writing down ideas I recommend going into the grocery store with a list and with a plan because what I did I was just like, I'm gonna look for a gluten-free label. By the way, there is something called certified gluten-free, which is this label right here that you'll see on some food products, which is a certification that some companies do to prove that they have less than 20 ppms of gluten, meaning this is the safest for celiacs. First time I went to the grocery store, completely unprepared. I was there for like two hours and I had like three mental breakdowns. I'm not even joking. That's why you should not go unprepared. I like was picking up items that I was like, this should not have gluten in it. And then it has like wheat or it has barley and like I didn't understand barley, rye. I didn't understand malt for the longest time. So I was like looking at labels, I'm like malt. And then I look it up, I'm like, hey. Like 
it was just so frustrating and I felt like I was then like at the point of being so angry that I was looking for more items that I was like I bet this has gluten and then I'm looking at it and I'm like I knew it and I hate it like just so mad just so be prepared just prepare yourself make a little list other than grocery shopping food also pops up in restaurants not every restaurant is going to be safe for us to eat it and that was like the hardest truth that I had to realize like I just can't wake up say oh I want to go to this and then go to it no you have to like plan ahead call them or look at their menu ahead of time look at reviews see are they gluten friendly are they gluten free are they good for celiacs there's so many things you have to consider now first you want to tell your server that you have celiac disease if you don't tell them they're gonna just think it's a preference and not care how the food's actually prepared in the kitchen there's a lot of cross-contamination when it comes to a restaurant unless you're at a dedicated gluten-free facility you're gonna wanna indicate that you have celiac disease. Another thing you wanna check is if their gluten-free items are actually gluten-free, which sounds crazy for things to say gluten-free when it's not, but that's how it is. So you wanna make sure like fries, fries for example, those can or cannot be gluten-free. Depends on how they are fried. So if they are fried in the same fryer as gluten-containing ingredients, not safe. But if it has its own separate fryer, you're perfectly fine to eat those. Even if it says gluten-free next to the fries on the menu, just check with your server if they're fried separately or together because that, that makes a huge difference. And I also wanna remind everybody that you are allowed to bring your own chips or soy sauce to a restaurant if they cannot provide ones that are gluten-free. Like when I go out for sushi, I always bring my own like gluten-free soy sauce packets or tamari just in case that they don't have it themselves. I know I'm mentioning this again, but I just wanna remind you that this did not happen overnight for me. This was not even like a year process. I'm now going on my third year being gluten-free and finally feeling like oh my gosh I feel like I know what I'm doing I'm just like kind of more in habit now with my eating and what I say and what I do and I've kind of figured out my own life with my disease now and working with it instead of just constantly focused on it but the hard truth of that is that's not how it is in the beginning and even though you know all these things you still have to figure out what's right for your body and that's like one thing that nobody can ever teach you and tell you exactly what to do is you have to figure that out on yourself and that's what's gonna take a ton of patience and this is what I mean by celiac disease is more than just the gluten-free diet it's being your own health advocate it's doing the things that you need to do in order to make sure that you're being healthy and the only way to do that is to speak up and speak up on your own health for the longest time I was like why do I keep getting sick why do I keep doing this I don't I'm too scared to go out why am I too scared to go out? It's because I'm too scared to speak up. And once I started speaking up, speaking up to a server, telling them you have celiac disease and that it's a serious disease and you'll have a severe reaction if you come into contact with it, they'll take it seriously. Ever since I started explaining my disease to servers, to my family, to my friends, things got a lot easier in my diet because the only way the people in your life are gonna know what's going on is if you tell them. So that's the first thing is being a health advocate for yourself. And speaking up for yourself is gonna be the start of it. That's not all of it. Because just because you're speaking up for yourself doesn't change the fact that you could accidentally eat gluten. In order to speak up for yourself, you need to learn more about your diet and need to learn more about how everything's working for yourself. And that's when I started researching and I found apps. Well, there's so many great apps out there that are trying to help you navigate through your disease. And other places too are just researching websites and finding dietitians and bloggers like me and support groups that just help you feel less alone. And another tool that has helped my food anxiety a lot, I just got it a couple months ago, it is the Nema Partner Sensor, which if you guys follow me on TikTok, you know what this is. It's a gluten sensor and it's right in the name. It literally senses gluten. So what you do is you just put a sample in these little capsules, then you just stick it right in and then you press a button. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it. And then it takes about two minutes to test it, but then you get told if that sample size is gluten-free or not. This has been such a great tool because I love cooking, but if you're gluten-free, you already know. Having a gluten-free diet, your options are very limited and it's very hard to tell if some foods are gluten-free or not, especially like spices and sauces. So now being able to just test spices and sauces in here, I'm able to expand how much I can eat now, which is so awesome. And it's great because I can bring it to restaurants too and test meals to make sure like I'm not about to ruin my night. Like I didn't get all dressed up to be in the bathroom all night. So I'm gonna bring this with me. We'll also link the Nema Partner Sensor in my caption below so you guys know where to get them. They did recently get bought out, so it is a new company and they are now Nema Partners instead of Nema and they have a lot of great things in the works so you definitely want to keep an eye on them. If you guys have any questions about these please reach out. I'm going to do a YouTube Q&A with the NEMA Partner Sensor just to answer any questions you guys have on it. I know this was a loaded video and I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions about celiac disease, about the gluten-free diet, about anything 
my Instagram DMs are always open. That sounds so weird to say. But really, if you guys ever want to message me, my inbox is always open. I have a website, noglutenguru.com, where I have a community tab and you can ask any questions you'd like. No matter the question, I am here to answer. If there's things you want me to test, try, anything, I'm here for it. I really hope you guys enjoyed all this information and I will see you next time.